As the sun sets on a gorgeous afternoon over the 40 acres here in Austin, Texas, it's time for Texas baseball as Texas takes on the Stanford Cardinal. The Cardinals and the Longhorns meet for the second time in this four game series here at UFCU Dishfalk Field. And last night, the Cardinal came up with a victory. In the fifth, though, Texas kept the game close in a nothing nothing ball game as Travis Duke comes out of the bullpen, gets a big out. And then when you go to the bottom of the fifth, Texas with a great opportunity to score and a huge strikeout of Zane Gerwitz at that point. And we go to the 10th in a nothing nothing ball game. In the 10th, Texas with a great opportunity, but a big strikeout ends that threat. And that leads us to the 12th, where Stanford gets it going with a leadoff base hit. Then a miscue, the one defensive mistake in the game that really cost Texas with the throw on the bunt. That leads to an opportunity here, maybe for a double play. Joe Baker can't get it out of his glove. And the Stanford Cardinal come away with a 1-0 win. I'm Keith Merlin, along with longtime college baseball Hall of Famer Greg Swindell. Welcome to UFCU Dishfalk Field. You looked at last night's ball game. It was all about pitching, really, from both sides. Yeah, both bullpens. The starting pitching did well, but the story of the game was, was the bullpens. Anytime you have a 0-0 game for 12 innings, you have to be pitching well. And for Texas, they did that out of the bullpen. But the big story was the Stanford pitchers, uh, not only the starting pitcher, Chris Bubich, who came in, he started this game and really kept the Texas hitters off balance for the first five innings with off-speed pitches, uh, change-ups, and good locations with his fastball. But Colton Hawk was the big story. Comes in, throws 96 pitches, gets his team into the 12th inning. Struck out eight in those 96 pitches in five and two-thirds innings. Big reason why Stanford won that game. Well, you look at Texas offensively, they've got to make some type of adjustments. There's no question about it. They struck out 21 times, folks, in the first three ball games of the year. 18 times last night in a 12-inning ball game. And I think that adjustment's got to be what Coach Greedo had talked about in the offseason. We've got to become more aggressive. We've got to swing at first pitches a little more. You get that first bat fastball, Greg, you got to let it go and be aggressive with it. You can't feel for it. We had 44 pitches fouled off last night. That's feeling for the ball, not aggressively through the strike zone. You can't go up there and be defensive, especially with a, with a pitching staff as talented as Stanford. Usually that first fastball is going to be the best one. So you jump on it, be aggressive. Texas needs to do that tonight. When you look at the Stanford lineup under the direction of the 40th year under the direction of Mark Marquis in his 40th season as the head coach. Their lineup looks like this today. When you look at their lineup, much like we saw last night, a little bit different spots in the lineup, but you got to get those first two guys in the lineup out, and they're going to be facing a really good right-hander for the Longhorns. Yeah, and Kyle Johnston needs to go out there, trust his stuff tonight. He has the stuff for the, to be a Friday night pitcher, limit his walks, enjoy the moment, go after, after these Stanford hitters, especially those first two in the lineup, like you were talking about, do not give up any free bases. Ball games opens it up with a fastball for a strike. Here you'll see limited walks. Kyle had four innings and had the five walks in his first start. And tr trust the stuff. He he has dynamic stuff. Good breaking ball. Good fastball. Don't give up the free walks. Might have been overthrowing a little bit in his first start against UNLV last weekend. See if he can make that adjustment as he faces the junior from San Diego. Edmund, a really good player. Outstanding defensively, good offensive player. Sees a lot of pitches and runs pretty well. Chops this one out onto the ground. A good start for Texas as Baker throws him out. And when you limit those walks, you limit your pitches also. And with this four game set and the long game last night, Texas used a lot of pitching Kyle Johnston, if he can get into the, the sixth inning in this ball game, he could save that bullpen in a little bit. Length. You just you want to stretch it out game, deep yes. into the game. Quinn Brody will strap in the left fielder. Sophomore from Los Angeles. Fastball in for a strike. So far, so good. Two hitters, two first pitch strikes. Yeah, that's a good sign for Kyle Johnston. You can see the live fastball. It's got a good downward angle on it. Repeat, rinse, and it's four to three again. So good start for Johnson. Gets ahead, gets two ground ball outs. Well, that's the key. Texas pitcher struggled last night a little bit getting that first pitch strike. You can do a lot of things once you get ahead of hitters. I mean, you don't, you don't even have to go to breaking balls. You can locate a good fastball, but the key is 
that first pitch strike. Other thing I notice is noticeable difference from Kyle tonight is he seems to be working quicker. He's on the mound ready to go right there. Yeah, you can uh, emotions. I mean, there's a lot of things that could go in getting comfortable with sur your surroundings. Your first start of the season. I'm sure he's had a talk with Skip in between now. It's been a week since he started. Just pick up the pace a little bit. It's a good looking freshman hitter. Nico Horner, true freshman from Oakland, California. You hit third as a true freshman for Stanford. Obviously, you've done some things in preseason. Kyle out in front, one and two now. A little like bit different night, excuse me, Greg, a little bit different night than last night. The ball will carry pretty good. It is going to get cool as it goes on, but no breeze tonight. Breeze was blowing dead in over the scoreboard for last night's ball game. Tonight, it, it's a day watching both teams take BP. The ball was getting out of here. And I like the pace that Kyle has going. A lot of times when you, when you are walking batters, you take your time in between pitches. You overthink. Kyle Johnston did not overthink that first inning. Two ground balls and a strikeout. Longhorns coming up. Whoa. When Stanford and Texas hook up, it's a lot about the head coaches. When you look at those two guys right there, over 3,500 wins, 3,510 as a matter of fact. Both of them have coached an awful lot of games in the College World Series. As you can see right there, both have won championships, five for Coach Garrido, two for Mark Marquist, and you go back to the time that they actually played together at one point on a summer team when Coach Garrido was coming out of pro ball and, and Mark Marquist was headed to Stanford. That's old school right there. <laughs> That's old school. Yeah. They play together. In his 47th year, his 20th at Texas, the head coach, and his lineup looks like this tonight. And for me, the key is the bottom part of this order. It's going to have to find a way to produce. And you look at Clemens, Kennedy, Clemens, and Rand. They've got to get something going at the bottom of this lineup. Yeah, Texas has to get something going. Last night, they just couldn't capitalize once they got the runners on base. And they're going to have to do it against a very good pitcher, Tristan Beck, a true freshman. Started the very first game of the season for the Stanford Cardinal. Tristan Beck has a good fastball. You see this good size to him. Just the third freshman to ever start a first game of the season for this Cardinal team. Had a good outing, six and a third innings. Only had the two strikeouts, but got the win. And Gets him there at first. It's the quickly Pac-12 pitcher of the week in his very first start. You see the scouting report. You see, I put in, in quotations right there. He's special. That's the very first words that came out of Mark Marquis's mouth when we talked to him about Tristan Beck today. And feed off his first start. Got into the seventh inning. Pitched very well. He also has a very good curveball. Coach Marquis is really high on this kid. That brings Boswell to the plate. First pitch in there for a strike. A little bit of a change as Boswell moves up in the lineup to the second spot in the lineup down last night against the left-hander. And that's that nose-to-toes bender right there. He's got that quick delivery live arm that he really talked about. You don't see the, like the 12-6 curveball too much these days. It's right over the top and it drops straight down. You make the first start, a true freshman make the first start to open the season, opening day starter. You do it at home against Cal State Fullerton, and then your second start is on the road at Texas. Pretty good education <laughs> for a true freshman. A back up the middle, and Boswell comes up with a base hit. Texas coming out aggressive, have swung at the first two, either one of the first two pitches, both batters that have come to the plate. I expect Texas to try to be a little more aggressive offensively. That brings Joe Baker to the plate, the sophomore from McKinney, as he steps in. Got back into the lineup last night after missing last weekend due to injury. Hit the ball hard a couple times on the line. Probably the hardest the ball was hit last night, one to left field. Took the left fielder, Quinn Brony, back just a few feet. About the only ball that got over the outfielders last night. 
Well, you look at this, Patrick Mathis uh, out just day to day at this point, uh, trying to get back in the lineup, had to leave last night's ball game, would be hitting in the third spot in the order. And that, that's a big loss. I mean, he is, he's a guy that has power, a lot of different things. So this lineup looks a lot different with him not in it at this point. And it's, it's going to be with, with Patrick day to day. I have to shuffle that lineup up a little bit. A little hit and run. It's one of the things I, I really expect this team to do more of than, than we have in a while. Throughout the history of the sport, when you've won more games than anybody else, obviously you know what you're doing, but he has not been a hit and run guy much. Yeah, he he's told you and I both that that's not something he's used very much. He's either had steal or bunt, but not the hit and run. And he's already put it on, I think, four or five times at this point in the season. I like it. I like it. It had. It makes the hitter be aggressive, makes him swing the bat, moves the defense around. A little bit different feel, though, for Beck, I would think, to start at home, Klein Field, Sunken Diamond, in a home crowd. Now he's on the road in a big crowd, and with the lights on on Friday night, it's a little bit different for him. I guarantee yeah, it is. it's a little bit different feel than he had last Friday night. Well, the ability to throw that breaking ball for a strike when he's down in the count, though. Oof, that was nice. It's just confidence in the pitch, confidence in yourself. Catcher has confidence that you can get it over the plate. It just puts a little bit in the back of the mind of the Texas hitters now. Hey, you're not only going to see, you're not always going to see a fastball when you're ahead in the count. Boswell will be off with this pitch. I would be surprised if he's not. Since we saw the hit and run, I, yes, I would I be surprised too. He is off. Fakes it and stops. Baker goes after a high fastball for the strikeout. Good thing he did stop, strike him out throwing. I think he was going and broke and didn't get the kind of jump that he thought he would, was gonna get. Smart base running by Brett down there. So let's take a look at it right here. Yeah, Tristan Beck already had his leg up and almost on his way to the plate before Brett got a jump over there at first base. So smart base running by Boswell not to go. Tres Pereira steps in. Junior from Eagle Pass. He's really swung the bat well. He hit in every Texas game so far. He's got a four game hitting streak as he steps in. He's been very consistent using the right hand side of the field. He's hit a couple of balls hard the other way for base hits. That's a good sign. It is. I've been out here a few times at practice early. Tress has been in that batting cage and just working on hitting that right center, working on going the other way, letting the ball get deeper, seeing the ball. Didn't leave anything on the table then, let it go. One of the things that you mentioned earlier, explain to the folks a quick arm. There's guys that throw hard, but they don't have a quick arm. They may have velocity, but they don't have a quick arm. Explain to the folks what a quick arm is. It's all about get, getting your hand out of your glove. You see some guys will get their hand out of their glove and just have a long delivery. You watch Tristan Beck right here. He brings that hand out of his glove, starts the home plate. It just gets through, I'd say like the hitting zone, it gets through the zone very fast. Doesn't have a long delivery. You can see his high school career was a good one. The one two. Nice job to lay off of that. It's a tough pitch to lay off he's, of. He's been laying off a lot of good curveballs, good breaking balls so far the first five games of this season. Talking to him earlier during the batting press, he did have the green light last night, but got the 3-0 hook. That's showing discipline. Ah! 
Good jump that time. Boswell has a bag. Three or four steps on the run that time. Picked a good pitch to run on to with the curveball. The curveball. Good jump. See right here. A little better jump. No peek in. Not even a tag. Puts himself in a scoring position. Texas four out of five now in the stolen base department on the season. Texas 0 for 3, 0 for 13, excuse me, with runners in scoring position. Now 0 for 14. Good bender. Nothing, nothing. We go to the second. When you look at Texas and Stanford, they have hooked up. This is the 74th time in history when you have these two teams have hooked up a lot of different places, postseason, regular season. Uh, a lot of home and homes you can see looking at both of them Texas with the six titles Stanford with two 51 appearances in the College World Series between these two clubs and just look at I think the one thing that jumps off the play page more than anything else is the Major League Baseball first round picks. Yeah, I mean players go to schools like Texas and Stanford for the baseball programs the schooling as well. I mean Stanford speaks for itself as far as the education Texas not so bad itself but the baseball programs are just two of the most storied programs in the country got two guys leading it right there 3510 victories between them that's amazing that's amazing four five six do for the cardinal as they come to the plate here in the top of the second mikey de kroger will step in a sophomore from woodside california that is the difference for me for Kyle so far first pitch strikes first pitch strike that was a breaking ball first pitch strike but again this inning needs to come out and be as aggressive as he was in that first inning Mikey you saw right there the younger brother two brothers that played starting in 2009 through 2014 they were teammates together as two brothers just young enough he couldn't play with his two Siblings ball on the ground to third crawl it. It's a diamond good throw got him really nice play tough play by Cody Clements makes the play there though Look, Keith, This ball's Kind of squibbed up the line not hit hard You don't know if it's going to hit the base goes right inside the bag Cody does a good job got, had a quick Exchange there to get the ball in his hand and a good play on the other end you see Casey gets out there a little quick you can see him go out and say that ball had a little sink on it coming across there. Alex Dunlap will step in. Yeah, I imagine Cody's thrown a few sinkers to Casey in their lifetime playing catch in the backyard or at any big league stadium as they grew up in. Out towards center. It'll drift over to left. Rand comes up with it. And Johnson looks in total control at this point. Five up, five down. And the other part of that, if we talk about first six pitch strikes, he's five out of six at this point, or four out of five at this point. And in his first start, he was 10 of the 19 batters. So held, nearly held half behind, the time. Walked. Did. Yeah, I mean, thing, things can go your way a lot easier. You can, you can throw a lot more different pitches when you get ahead in the count. Loker steps in Johnny Loker. Made they a couple of nice plays last night for the senior. The first pitches haven't been all fastballs. He, he's dropped a couple of curveballs over for a first pitch strike. I like his tempo getting it going. Yeah you, you hit the nail on the head that right in the first inning you saw that. And when, when you start to take your time, that, that also can tell your coach you're just not feeling confident in yourself. Walking around having to, having to think. You're, you overthink sometimes. And floated a little change up in there right there. Looked like a straight change. I mean, Michael going to get their sign straightened up.
Greg, coming out of the bullpen, you you did that. You started. You started in college. You came out and closed in college. I know there was. You did a little bit of everything when when you were here. But the mindset when you know you have to toe the rubber when your bullpen has been exhausted. I mean, Texas bullpens, you know, still got some guys down there, but they would love to get some length out of him right now. Does he feel that pressure? I don't think he. I think he wants to get deep in this game for himself. I mean, yeah, the bullpen was shot a little bit. And it's going to be a long series, but. He's going to do it for himself, and how do you do that? You're aggressive. He's been like that so far the first two innings. Perfect through two. We go to the bottom of the second. Nothing, nothing ball game. These two teams known for pitching. We've seen it so far in this series. Don't that's you right there. I'm telling you what, I don't have that. He's got more hair in that mohawk. Come on, got, next, next on weekend, seven. that's all you. I've got seven of them pointed <laughs> up in the air. It wouldn't work, but you can see the pitchers. And the ERAs for these two teams, that, that's spectacular. I mean, 1.13 to 1.50. Teams are not scoring a lot of runs. There's some pretty good concentration right there from a young man. Yeah, these um, Stanford didn't give up many runs their first series, and obviously zero runs last night, and Texas pitching has been doing the same. Michael Cantu will step in against Beck. Four for 14 on the season for Cantu. That, that's a hittable fastball right now. He seems to, he's struggling getting the, getting it down. We've seen it up a lot. He's had more more command with his with his off speed pitch. It's that one for a strike. The arbiters in tonight's game. David Wiley behind the plate. Tim Henderson at first. Kelly Nutt at second, and John Bible, the arbiter at third. And two good hack on that high fastball. If Texas can, the hitters can start to, I know they want to be aggressive, but you want to be aggressive in the zone. They've chased a lot of balls out of the zone so far, fastballs out of the zone. Chopped on the ground. Nice play. Athletic play to go up. And coming back after missing with a couple of fastballs, Beck comes back and gets an out. That brings freshman Cody Clemens to the plate, the freshman from Houston Memorial High School. He will step in. Cody, at this point, four for 16 on the young season. He's driven in a couple. He's done a nice job adjusting. To playing third, being a guy that came out of high school as a shortstop and a second baseman, you know, but he fits in this lineup. It seems better at third base right now. He's an athletic young man. We saw Brett Boswell last year going from shortstop to third base. Now he's back at shortstop, so Cody over there right now doing a good job. That's a good overhand curveball right there. Third strikeout by Texas hitters in the ballgame, and Beck has three. Third strikeout, second looking, and second on that off speed pitch right there. You see it here from behind home plate. Just starts outside and just curves back out over the outer half of the plate. Ben Kennedy will step in. He's the sophomore from College Station in right field tonight. This could be what Ben needs. He's, he's been in a pinch hitting role his first few at bats and has been unsuccessful. Maybe tonight get three, four at bats, get you in a rhythm. Right now, Tristan Beck's in a rhythm with that breaking ball. Seven straight within the strike zone. Just attacking right now is back. 
who didn't get the call. <laughs> David Wiley did not bring him up. The entire <laughs> the entire Stanford ball club was headed to the to the dugout. It was a good pitch. I mean, it was the same location. I think this one's a little more off the plate, but so when you let these pitches go and you're, and you're feeling in control of it, you know it's going to be a good pitch. David Wiley not biting on the way. That was he, a little off the plate. <laughs> Fish weren't biting, was he sort of looked in and said, what? I didn't call it a strike. <laughs> like, hold on. Chopped on the ground up the first baseline. For the out. One, two, three, go the horns here in the second. Tomorrow, it's Super Saturday on LHN. Our lineup features two Texas softball games, game three of this Stanford-Texas baseball series, Texas women's hoops versus the Horn Frogs at TCU. And throughout the day, Longhorn Extra will keep you updated, including highlights from the men's hoops game against number three, Oklahoma. Full day coverage begins Saturday morning at 10, Central only on LHN. Go to the top of the third, nothing, nothing ball game. One hit in the game, that by Texas. Should we tell them that the game's right in front of them? They don't have to watch it on the app right there. Well, they can watch it on the app, okay. the ESPN app. Okay. Kyle Johnston in his first start last Friday, four innings, 82 pitches tonight. He's thrown 20 total, 10 in each of the first two innings. Credit a lot of that with that tempo. He's got a nice pace. Not taking much time in between pitches. And he has the feel for that pitch, the changeup, and all of his pitches so far in the first two innings. And again, he's he's ready to go right now. He's got his signal, got his sign. Stanford trying to take a little time, trying to back out a little bit. Whitaker pops his ball back out of play. The sophomore from Alamo, California. Bottom third of the order due. Johnson has retired all six Stanford Cardinal. Kyle has all four pitches. I mean, that's more of a curveball right there than the slider, it looked like. Yeah, that was the curve. Just ran away from it a little bit. Fell off towards first base. Very efficient in those first two frames, retiring all six on just 20 pitches. So the sixth pitch of this at bat, longest at bat of the game by a Stanford Cardinal hitter. That's that good changeup you were talking about right there. That was very good. I mean, this comes out of Kyle's hand. Looks like a fastball. You see it has downward angle on it. Gets right to the plate and then just dives right off on the outer half. Not much a left-hander can do with that left-handed hitter. Matt Decker will be the DH. He will be pinch hitting. His Mark Marquis never lists a DH. He lists the previous day starting pitchers the DH, and then he makes a decision who he wants to go to. Decker appeared in last night's ball game. He's a junior from Portland, Oregon. To back good breaking balls. He's got really good stuff tonight. <laughs> so far, he does. He's got Matt Decker hitting his helmet up there. That's right. good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Got away with that one. See a little smile on his face. Michael Cantu wants it down and away, but this one just comes back over. It was off speed. Sometimes you can get away with them. You take them when you can. Look at him. A little smile on his face. That'll bring Jack Klein to the plate. The junior from San Francisco. Center fielder for the Cardinal. Had a good night last night. Reach base 
three different times. Hitting 300 on the season as he steps in. See Kyle had thrown quite a few off speed and breaking balls. First fastball he did just didn't have a good grip on it. And then you try to hit this one right down Broadway. Didn't get the call. Slows down just a little bit. Takes a deep breath. Tries to work back from a 3 0 count. He hadn't thrown just over three balls the entire game and threw three in a row. So he did a good job of stepping off, collected himself, and threw a good fastball in there, 3 1. Now you got to do it on 3 1. Went off speed. First walk issued in the game and the first base runner in the game. Texas has struggled in that department as you can see right there that is not something that Skip Johnson he preaches strike one and we don't want to walk but almost five per game as a staff yeah, very un uncharacteristic of a Texas staff Edmund steps back in Klein does have good speed he is a threat to run Edmund 0 for 1 in this one. Pounded on the ground to Baker. And that'll do it again for the Cardinal in the third. They do get their first base runner, but come up empty. Nothing, nothing. We go to the bottom. Head coach Mac Brown. Previous head football coach. Longtime head coach, football coach at the University of Texas here at the ballpark tonight. Enjoying his night out. Trying to root the horns on to victory. So we go to the bottom of the third inning. Longhorns trying to get something going. Skip Johnson, pitching coach, his pitching. <laughs> Those are pretty good numbers right there. One run on by both staffs in this series so far, 29 innings. Skip is the pitching coach, but he'd like to use that hand to wave those runners around. Casey Clements will lead it off, junior from Houston. Followed by Tyler Rand and then back to the top of the order. They'd like to get something going, no question. You know, we're seeing Texas also fan a lot. 18 last night, already three in this ballgame. And both pitching staffs and 29 innings of work in this series so far have 27 strikeouts. This both staffs combined. We've seen some good good arms on the bump. Do you take a strike here? I think you would be aggressive. You get a good yeah, fastball, let it go. Back at it. You do want base runners, but this should be a good fastball to hit. Down in the zone. Good at bat for Casey. See if that ignites the Texas offense. First leadoff base runner of an inning by either club in the ballgame to this point. Tyler Rand will step in. A true freshman from Cypress, Texas. He's had a good start to his collegiate career. He's five for 15. He scored a run. He's driven in three. Might be bunting here. He does square early. That is the scariest thing of a hitter of anything because your your body is turned sideways and that ball starts to run on you. It's hard for you to move. You're you feel comfortable when your shoulders 
or the other way and you have the bat back ready to hit, you can move. You're used to moving that thing. But when you get your shoulders perpendicular to the mound, to you got nowhere to go. It is. That's a scary moment right there. And this is even scarier because you have to do it again. That's why I always use the term, you know, to be a good bunter, you got to stick your nose in it. You, you got to grind it, get down there, get ready to go. See, sacrifice bunts, fourth at this point in the nation. Trying to get their fifth of the season, or they're actually their eighth of the season. Dunlap. Alex Dunlap going to go out and talk to the freshman. Just going to tell him, give me that fastball. They're trying to give us an out right here. Get the ball over the plate. Settle him down. Pitch count. This will be the 40th pitch of the ball game for the freshman right-hander. You know, when you throw a pitch like that, it, it can make Rattle a pitcher you. upset too. Yeah, I can. Came right back in there, got away from him again, and Texas has something really working here. Rand looks like he's all right. I'm not sure where it caught him. They caught right him on right the hand. Yeah, right on the hand. He's not feeling too good right now as he gets down to first base. Bends over. You'll see again the fourth fastball. They've all ran in. He tried to get his hand out of the way. Unable to do that. You see the ball just keeps running in, turns it over, gets him right, right on the outside under the pinky. So he's Didn't let that him, didn't feel good. Didn't let it affect him right there, but when he got to first, he was feeling the effects of it. You can see it's shaking. Are you, you can see the red already. It's it's one of those things where it will swell and it'll swell quickly. Well, that's not feeling very good right there. Let's well, set the situation. Nobody out in the inning. Lead off walk and a hit batter. And Texas has the opportunity as Gerwitz comes to the plate here to get on the board for the first time in this series. They have been shut out for 14 innings, 12 last night, and the first two in this one. Well, he, he will be asked to lay that bunt down as well. Can't be a comfortable feeling seeing what just happened. Four straight pitches running in on Tyler Rand. The fourth one hitting him. Up the third baseline, good execution. The forward first gets away, the miscue. Texas will get on the board, one will score. Everybody else will move up 90 more feet, and it's one nothing Texas. Well, excellent bunt by Zane Gerwitz. Bunts it down the third baseline, brings the third baseman in. Gets the sacrifice. Mikey DeCroder just throws it wide to first. We'll see Nico Horner over there, unable to catch it. Ball goes to the fence. Casey Clemens scores. Tyler Rand to third, and Zane Gerwitz to second. Well, Gerwitz will be credited with a sacrifice, moves up and reaches base on the E5 on the throwing error, and Texas on the board, leading here 1 0. Boswell steps in, nobody out in the inning. Got to get him over, get him in, play the game right here, make this a crooked number. Yeah, ideal would be get a base hit and score both these runs, but I'm sure Texas would take one right here. Corners are up for Stanford. A ground ball to second. Texas will get another run. Couldn't check his swing, started and stopped. And the count evens. Sure. Tristan's out there going, why couldn't I throw the curveballs on the bunts? He's got more command of his off speed pitch than he Absolutely does his fastball. Yes. It's a tough pitch to hit, but I think I would look for that pitch. And then with the fastball.
Beck looking for the strikeout. And if you're Boswell, that's the one thing you want to do right here is make contact. The one two. Nice job by Dunlap to smother that pitch right there. Very nice job. Got the body in front of it, kept it in front of him. I think he's going to see another bender right here. I would think so. I mean, Tristan Beck, that's his best pitch tonight. Chopped on the ground, well done. This will score a run and move the runner up. Excellent at bat. 2 0 Texas. Brett Boswell fooled a little bit earlier in the at bat by the breaking ball. Gets the breaking ball right there. Excellent job. Ground ball to second. Get that run in. And the other part of that is he hit it to the right hand side. It got it did both jobs. It scored the run, moved the runner up now, still with an opportunity. Less than two outs. Uh, uh, you don't need a base hit here. A fly ball to center makes it three nothing. So infield up for Stanford. They'll try to cut the run off the plate on anything on the ground. Baker steps in. Ball gets away from Dunlap. Coming in to score is Gerwitz. And Stanford has shot themselves in the foot, and it's three nothing Texas here. Pitch by Beck. Looked like a cut on him. Outer half of the plate. Right at the end, the ball just cuts away from Alex Dunlap. You'll see it. He's set up down and in. This ball cuts away right there. Right off the glove of Dunlap. Scored as a pass ball. Texas taking advantage of the defensive miscues from Stanford. We didn't see any of that last night. They were very good defensively. Texas has taken advantage of it, put a three spot on the board. With no hits. No hits in the inning. A walk, a hit batter, and a miscue. Actually, two miscues with the fastball. Those fastballs to Tyler ran on the bunt attempt seemed to have affected Tristan Beck a little bit. Nice. Cutting them off a little bit and it's making the ball cut away. Stayed with that one. Already at 50 pitches here in the third. I would think he would throw a curve right here. I really do. Well, you know, when you're struggling with one and, and you, you're commanding the other. Fastball. Ball hit well into right center. Klein, can he get there? He cannot. This will go for extra bases. Loker comes, brings it up, gets it back in. Second hit of the ball game. Opposite field double, Joe Baker. Got this one down in the zone. Right down the middle, Joe keeps his head down. Watch his head right on the ball. Put a good little charge into that one in the right center. Baker's first double of the year, ninth double of the season for Texas, and the first extra base hit in the series by either club. Pitching's been dominant. There's always growing play, pains for young pitchers, and you can tell uh, the inability to throw strike one. You see the difference for what's happening for Johnston and what's happening for Beck is the difference is strike one. There goes the runner. <laughs> Stealing third. Five out of six on the season are Texas, and one for one is Joe Baker. He didn't hesitate. Beck gave him a couple of looks at second, and once he lifted and went home, Joe got a good jump. Now the infield is back in with one out. 2 0 break the ball in there for a strike.
take advantage of what the defense gives you. Chopped on the ground, in the left for a base hit. RBI single, 4-0 Texas. Not done. Trying to do too much. This Tris right here just gets a fastball. Right past to Kroger, drawn in at third base. And now the see the couple relievers running down to that Stanford bullpen. It is the third inning, second game of a four-game set. You'd like your freshman to go a little bit longer, but you also don't want to leave him out there too long. Five-game hitting streak for Barrera. That's the first hit with a runner in scoring position by either team in this series. Michael Cantu steps in. Still just one gone in the inning. Back to back singles to left. Third consecutive hit for Texas. Bullpen will have to go in a hurry. Oh, yeah, pitch because Rusty Fielder's already, already been out there once. So the next trip, he would have to take him out in the same inning, correct? Uh, yes. So that bullpen has got to go in a hurry. Alex Dunlap going out to buy some time. Give the pitcher down there a few more pitches. So Cody Clements steps in. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. 4 0 Texas trying to separate here in the third. Set on a pitch right now, having a tough time getting the ball down. It's Tristan Beck at this point. Pretty good swing right there. Fouled it back. So by the reaction, a good, good catch up there in the sweet level. In the first game, five hits, no runs. This inning, four runs and three hits. Best offensive inning by either club in this series so far. Eighth batter of the inning for Texas offensively. Really has struggled with his command of his fastball. And at times with the break, the breaking ball has, he has had more command with it, but just seems like an off night right now for Tristan Beck. Just commanding. Staying with the fastball, though, which is surprising to me. He hasn't mixed in as many of the curveballs that we saw earlier in the game. And he was comfortable with it in the first couple of innings, and this inning seems everything is going away from the freshman a little bit. First time in his college career, facing a little adversity in the inning, had a pretty clean first start, the sixth and the third innings, and only two hits and one walk. Outfield fairly shallow. 
and straight away. And sometimes you put on pickoff plays, quite frankly, as, as a coach, to give the bullpen more time to get ready. Quite frankly, as a pitcher, you know that. <laughs> so <laughs> you're trying your best to, to get out of this inning and maybe get one more, get one more out. Hit hard down the left for a line, but foul. Got a pitch up. Squared it up, but just foul. Weisenberg, the right hander throwing in the Stanford bullpen. There were a few times I, I knew I was in trouble and infielders are coming in to talk catchers are coming in to talk and I'm like get out of here I know why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was sent out there a few times myself. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit crisply on the ground could be two. To short to first and the innings over but not before damage done by the by Texas they come up with four runs on three hits. A third of the game in the books, and Texas leads now 4 0. A third of the game in the books here, and Texas gets on the board with a four spot in the bottom of the third inning. Take advantage of it, finally get some back to back hits. They get hits with runners in scoring position. And take advantage of the miscues by Stanford to put a four spot on the board. I think that's the big thing. Because Tristan Beck was was throwing well. Texas able to get the bunts down, take advantage of a throwing error, a pass ball. But I, I think the big thing right there was they scored a few runs without getting a hit, but then string together consecutive hits, kept the rally going. Real good inning for Texas right there after being shut down for the first 15 innings of this first two games. Well the young sophomore from Flower Mound now staked to a four nothing lead as he toes the rubber he'll face the two three and four spots in the order as Quinn Brody will step in. Brody 0 for one tonight. Big thing for Kyle right here continue to keep the good rhythm and tempo going. Well, his pitch counts in such great shape at this point. Now he misses on the first two here. Only 35 pitches in the first three innings of the ball game. He retired the first eight Stanford Cardinal that he faced. That pitch tonight, that off-speed changeup has been a dynamite pitch for him. Uh, two oh, that's that's behind in the count right now. Yeah. We know we get that one over. Fouls it away. It's almost as if that's like a little backdoor like slider type pitch with the speed on it is 84 miles an hour. Well, the changeup should be somewhere around seven to eight miles an hour slower than your fastball. If I'm not mistaken. This ball hit out toward left. Coming on his ran. He misplays it. Tries to come get it. It's going to get by to the wall. This could lead to three bases. On his way to third. With a sliding triple to lead off the top of the fourth inning. You get caught in between sometimes, Greg, as an outfielder. I can get there, and then you realize you can't. A lot of times it puts you in big trouble. This ball got up on Tyler quicker than he thought it was. See this slicing back towards him, and right at the last second he tries to hold up but just can't get his body in front of it. It's going to go as a single and an E7. You could tell he thought he had a chance to get to it in the air, and then at the last minute realized he couldn't make it. it scooted by him. So base hit, E7, first miscue of the game for Texas. Nico Horner with the opportunity to get Stanford on the board here. Infield back for Texas. Chopped on the ground right side. Coming in to score is... Brody and it's a four to one ball game. Well, it's all 
Nico Horner was trying to do right there. That was a fastball up in the zone. He just tomahawked it, got on top of it, and a little ground ball to first, and got the got the run in. So Stanford comes right back to answer. And Mikey DeCroder will step in. That would probably, in my opinion, ball hit back up the middle for a base hit. Stanford getting something going. I would think you would see Mark Marquis go to his bullpen now because you answered. You started, got some momentum back on your side, and they do have some activity in their bullpen. The piece of hitting right here stays inside it. Right back through the box on an off-speed pitch. Alex Dunlap will step in. Big, strong right-handed hitter. Quite an outdoorsman. <laughs> Kayaking and runoff in the mountains of Colorado. Almost lost his life. Now, kayaking the first is, time. That's the first time. <laughs> then he got cornered by a wild boar. I might have a weapon of some type with me if I got cornered by a wild boar. <laughs> I got to tell you. So he's quite the outdoorsman. But now he's down 0-2. From the Woodlands, Texas. He's done lap. Playing in his home state. The 0 2. Stays upstairs. Longhorns double play depth in the infield. Love to get a ground ball here. Just misses on the top side there. The count goes even at two and two. A little more deliberate now once they've gotten a couple runners on base for Kyle. He was in a in a good rhythm. That's what happens when you get the runners on base. Start to take your time. Think a little bit more. I would think DeKroger will be off with the pitch here. We'll see what happens. Not moving. Swing and a miss. Good thing for Stanford. As Dunlap couldn't make contact. Fourth strikeout for Johnston in the ballgame. Lots of off speed tonight from Kyle Johnston. You see this right here. Bottom just drops right out of it. So two gone in the inning. 50th pitch of the ball game coming from the Texas right-hander. Johnny Loker will step in. Popped up to the catcher. Can two his first time up. Fifty pitches still a relatively small number with three and two thirds in the book. Yeah, he's thrown quite a few this inning had to work a little bit more than he had in the first three innings. Popped up right side will it stay in play. Clements over right to the wall runs out of real estate. Do it again. 2 right in front of mom. <laughs> Trying to save. Debbie Clemens over there sitting right there on the front row. Mom just to his left. Well, she's been at a few games. <laughs> she, she probably, Casey, you got to protect me a little better than that. <laughs> one, two, and one for Stanford. Four, four, and one for Texas. Four, one Texas lead here. Top of the fourth. 
Got him inside corner, and that ends the frame. Stanford does answer. They come up with one of their own. It's a 4-1 ball game. Out in the loss. The young freshman, Tristan Beck, outstanding in his first career start against Cal State Fullerton. You can see the numbers right there. Struggled tonight in his second start. First one on the road away from Klein Field. The campus of Stanford University. Or tonight he went three innings allowed, four runs, three of them earned. You can see he walked, actually struck out three and walked one. He hurt himself. You, you, you could tell that he didn't have command of his fastball tonight as we have seen in the past. Yeah, well, it wasn't unusual for a freshman to do that, to, to have a good first appearance and then go on the road and it just seemed tonight that Tristan, the fastball was command of it wasn't there. Texas did a good job of laying off the breaking ball the last couple of innings, especially that third inning. He's going to give way to Keith Weisenberg, making his second appearance of the season so far. He comes on to face Ben Kennedy. Count evens at one and one. steady diet of big strong <laughs> tall pitchers for the Stanford Cardinal they take up the, the whole screen Weisenberg now ahead one and two got him so that's the way the four starts for Texas good start for Weisenberg coming in paints on the inner half and then throws that sinker away and Kennedy can't catch up. Casey Clements got it started in that four run third when he had a good at bat. Came up with the walk to start the inning. So he has walked and scored in the ballgame. Nothing fancy about that. That's good old fashioned hardball right there. Ran right back and let it go. Casey right couldn't at. catch up to it. The 0 2. Just threw it right by him. Back to back strikeouts for Weisenberg. Nothing but fastballs. Coming right after the Texas hitters in the fourth inning. We're going to have a pinch hitter. I would think that Tyler. Rand's hand at this point. He really took a blow on that right hand. And he's being lifted here for Brady Harlan, the true freshman from Corsicana, came into last night's game for Patrick Mathis. He comes on here for his first at bat of the night. Back to back nights coming in. You never know when your name's going to get called. out to left tried to come in and get it did Quinn Brody but couldn't come up with it first career knock for the young man from Corsicana the left fielders that was about the same height as the one that Tyler Rand lost you see Quinn Brody the same thing he was just hesitant on to come get that one or let it drop in front of him he's able to stay in front of it Old Brady to single his first career hit. It's the first pinch hit, base hit for Texas this season. They're one for seven now. Just underneath us, my partner tried everything he could do to get to that baseball. Your arms are a little short, partner. Yeah. Gerwitz reached on the miscue, his sacrifice, scored a run, but he's 0 for 1 in this one. Third at bat in the ball game for the leadoff hitter for Texas. Hit on the ground crisply. Bobbled by Edmund. No chance anywhere. And the inning continues for Texas. Unusual for Tommy Edmund right there. 
Just a ground ball right to him. Looked like right at the end, might have just taken a little hop. Just up. A routine ground ball. See right there, came up on him right there at the end. Zane hustling all the way. Didn't get a throw. E6. Second miscue of the ball game for Stanford. They had one miscue coming into this one. They've got two today. Rip Boswell singled, stole a base in the first, grounded the second to drive in a run his last time up. So he is one for two with a ribby and a, and a stolen base. Sophomore from Rockwall, Texas, steps back in. Back up the box. Nice play by Edmund. Comes up across the diamond in time. Outstanding play. Made a miscue and then made a dynamite play right there. Did not let that error bother him one bit. Tommy Edmund with a big league play of Brett Boswell. I think you can hang a star on that one, Keith. Absolutely. Four one Texas as we go to the top of the fifth and we go down into the Longhorn dugout and visit with head coach Augie Garrido. Coach, one of the things that we've talked about all year, it's not your batting average, it's how you score runs and your offense has done a nice job tonight to put runs on the board. It's not as breezy here in the dugout tonight as it was last night. <laughs> <laughs> but there's other things that go on. I thought getting guys over makes that happen. Boswell's at bat where yeah. he drives in a run and moves the runner to third, and it, you're able to capitalize that and put multiple runs on the board. Absolutely, and uh, th they're doing a good job of putting the ball in play and making and taking quality at bats, which is what we put an emphasis on, and, and uh, creating runs. And coach, we noticed early in this game, Kyle Johnson on the mound has his tempo is a little quicker tonight. He's getting the ball and getting on the mound. He's getting the ball, getting on the mound, and he's and, and at the same time, he's in control. He really looks like he is uh, focused and relaxed and uh, aggressive. Thanks for taking the time, coach. Anytime. As we go to the changes in the outfield, as Harlan, who was in left, will move to right, and Jake McKenzie. A Mr. Utility player can do anything, moves into left. So a defensive alignment for Texas for the rest of the ball game. Harlan was moves from left to right and into left field. Goes Jake McKenzie and Kyle Johnson out for his fifth inning of work. Yeah, Kyle was doing an outstanding job. We talked about the pace and the tempo. We also saw him on the bench concentrating, getting focused. What you got to do if you want to be that Friday night guy here at the University of Texas. Right now, he's into the fifth inning. 54 pitches, a good pitch count. On a night where they needed some depth out of their starter. Whitaker just gets a piece of it, keeps the at bat alive. If they could get him to the seventh, I think it'll be a real shot in the arm for Texas. You look at what Stanford, Stanford got. 12 innings out of three pitchers last night. Texas had to use a lot more pitching than that. The 0 2 again. Chopped on the ground. Just over the bag. Are they going to call it a fair ball? Yes, they are. Whitaker said it hit me in the foot. He's still at home plate. Didn't take off to first base. He still, Mark Marquis is going to come ask. Hey, can you ask and see that that ball hit him? Yeah, just ask for some help. And ask David Wiley. Take a look at it right here. Looks like you can see the turf, the rubber pellets below the turf right here. Look right in front of his foot. See those rubber pellets go up. Could have hit his toe, and that's what made it stay fair. Could have been. But you still need to run. Yeah, absolutely. But he, I think he felt like it hit him, and he was not going to have to move. But a good out right there. As Decker steps in, so three unassisted if you're scoring. Decker steps in. He's fed Matt Decker 
a few of those so Steady far tonight. Diving. Matt Decker's unable to recognize that pitch out of Kyle Johnston's hand. Four or five of those same pitches in a row. Put <laughs> your man Dicker. See if he changes it up here. 60th pitch of the night for Kyle Johnston. Hit pretty well out to right, going back as Harlan, just into the game. Puts it away for the second out of the inning. Four in a row retired by the sophomore right hander. That brings Jack Klein to the plate. He walked his first time up. You see the numbers in Kyle's first start. Four innings, one earned run, the four Ks and five walks tonight. That's the biggest difference. His command of all of his pitches, every one of his pitches tonight in just the one walk. The ability to throw that little off speed pitch for a strike has been gigantic. Much different than we saw last Friday night. You see the difference in those last two. One first pitch was just a nice and relaxed, and the second one was a tried to throw it hard and make it break more than it should, left it up. See it bat alive. A lot of breaking balls for Kyle Johnson. He has the he has the good fastball. Let's see one time maybe climb the ladder with a good heater right here. He hasn't thrown too many tonight. He has not. I mean, I would think his if you're looking at percentages, uh, he's thrown less fastballs than a break than off speed pitch, which is unusual for a guy that can throw in the mid 90s. Heats him up right here in on the hands, charging quickly as Clements and. Nice pick on the other end. And one, two, three, go the Cardinals. We'll be back with Mark Marquis from the Stanford Cardinal when we come back. Bottom of the fifth inning, 4-1 Texas, as we get the opportunity to go down in the Stanford Cardinal dugout and talk with their head coach, Mark Marquis. And coach, one of the things over the years that you've always talked about, I've heard Coach Garrido talk about it, is you find out about something about your club and you take them on the road in a hostile environment. And you saw some youth show up here early in this ball game for you. Well, no question. You know, and uh, you, you know, you, you walk a guy, hit a guy, you make an error, and you got they got three runs, you know. And, and But that's that's how you learn. Hopefully, you know, we learn from it, and we're still in this game, so hopefully we can come back. But they're, they're, they're the guys doing a great job, you know, throwing everything over the plate, getting ahead. So they've done a good job. But you can't can't give a great team, you know, free base runners and make errors. So that, that, that really hurt us. Yeah, Coach, I was going to bring that up, but Kyle Johnson, it seems that he has a lot, all of his pitches working tonight. Uh, Y'all just haven't been able to figure him out. Well, yeah, I and mean, you know, because it's not just one pitch. He's, he's, he's had command of all, about three of them and done a really good job with it. They, hopefully we can get him a little tired and we can maybe get <laughs> something up with him, something we can hit. Uh, thanks for taking the time, right, Coach. Thank you, guys. That's Mark Marquis, the head coach at Stanford University. Thanks to him for taking some time to visit with us. It's fun to talk to these two guys. I mean, it, it, there's no doubt about it in my mind just because the fact is 3,510 wins. You just start right there. I know we look at each other and laugh when you say that. I mean, that's more time than I've been on this planet, it seems like. Yeah, you've seen it's a, a long lot. time to play 3,500 games. We've played the game. We think we've seen a lot of, lot of games. These guys have played a lot, coached a lot, won a lot, lost a lot. First pitch, breaking ball hits Joe Baker. Second time in the ball game, Texas has had a leadoff base runner. Weisenberg. I find it odd right there. He, he just went through three hitters the last inning. 
Yeah, he threw 13 pitches, all 12 up for strike, strikes last and inning. He gets the and on our all fastballs. <laughs> Starts out with a breaking ball and hits Joe Baker. Barrera steps in. There goes Baker. No, he had faked it. Good move on his part. Everybody, Stanford was moving like he was breaking. Held up after three quick steps. There's squares. And he squares early. Throw over. Baker back to the bag. We're still around. Long pause this time. Pulls it back. Just underneath this. Oh, it's actually on the roof. Partner, you're jumping every time. You're ready to catch a foul ball tonight. Did you just did you come to the ballpark ready to catch one? It's Friday night, man. Okay. You just you lights are on. Yeah, lights are I get on. giddy on okay. Friday night. Just, I'm checking. You're not gonna dink me. You're not gonna try to come up and catch it and then pull your hands back. I would never hard. do that. Okay, good. I mean, I'll say I, mean, I might catch it, but I might, I'm not gonna dink you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Throw over. Oh, oh. Baker back in. Pay you back for hey, no. 30 years ago. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm going to be ready, but just don't get over in front of me and then say I got it and then pull out of the way and deke me. We saw, we saw Tress giving a fan knuckles the other night. He just gave David Wiley knuckles behind the home plate right there. Loves to be at the ballpark. <laughs> he does. Sets back in. 1-1 one, one count. Nobody out. 4-1 ball game here. Bottom of the fifth. Gets away from Dunlap. Baker with a big turnaround second. He'll be credited with a stolen base. That pitch was upstairs, but he got an outstanding jump that time, did Baker. He did, and he kind of coasted into second base. Not sure if he'd have made the third anyway. Let's see the Big jump, peeks in, and then just kind of coast. Third stolen base of the night for Texas. The 2 1. Off oh, speed hitting. Third hit batter of the night by Stanford Cardinal pitching. That was an off speed pitch. Two hit batters by Weisenberg, both of them on, on the off speed variety. I guess if you're going to get hit, <laughs> the slow one, slower the better. So this one just rides in. It's good technique. I mean, by getting hit by a pitch right there, you go and turn into it, turn away from it. Yeah, you always. If the first thing you want to teach you as a young hitter, you can stride, get ready to go, just learn to get your head turn. You just turn to the inside. Your left shoulder, if you're right-handed hitter, your left shoulder comes in, get the back of that helmet. It turned in quickly because you're not sure where it's going to go, but there's an art to learning how to be hit with a baseball, no doubt. It still hurts. <laughs> and two squares early. Pulls it back. This could be two. The second for one, the turn, and that's a 6 4 3 double play. Put the little play on, try to get the defense to move, Greg. But if you put it in play, if you get it in the middle of the diamond, it's not the right spot. Not in the right spot. <laughs> you want to hit it in, into the, the gap where the shortstop was or second baseman. And it's tough to be able to recognize where they are, recognize the pitch. Second double play turn by the Cardinal tonight. Just by doing that right there, Weisenberg had hit the first two hitters. Put that ball on the ground. He's got a pitcher out there struggling. Michael Cantu does Stanford a favor right there. Popped up. Will he stay in the field to play? Over to defense. Mr. Kroger runs out of real estate. He'd like to pick one up right here, though. Momentum, a little bit of a momentum swift when switching the game when Stanford got on the board in the fourth after the fourth spot in the bottom of the third by Texas. And you, you just get that feeling that 
little momentum in their dugout if they can get out of this frame sometimes a defensive momentum first and second nobody out you think oh we could get this game blown open now you got a chance if you're Stanford to get yourself back in the ball game if you can get an out right here one and two to Cody Chase to high hardwood. Weisenberg out of the frame after hitting two batters, finds the way to get out of it, giving up nothing. Tommy Edmund will lead it off, the leadoff hitter for the Stanford Cardinal. This game would not be as close as it is without this play. Dynamite play. Texas threatening to break it wide open, laid his body out. He had made a miscue earlier in the inning himself that led to this jam, but that is a dynamite play to throw out Brett Boswell. Tommy Edmund leading it off here. Leadoff hitters. Players hitting in the leadoff spot against Texas this season. Listen to this one, Greg. Or 0 for 17 in the leadoff spot. It was a very good player last week for UNLV in the leadoff spot went 0 for the weekend. Tommy Edmund, a very good player, is 0 for the weekend at this point. 0 for 17 out of the leadoff spot against Texas pitching. Well, that's a pretty incredible stat right there. So the 0-1. It might be telling my coach, hey, coach, I want to play tomorrow, but I don't want to lead off. How about second? <laughs> Ninth. Edmund down now, 0 2. Stays upstairs. Johnson almost looked like he wanted that one as well. He was walking off. Let's see if he comes back with it. When Brody awaits on deck. Nico Horner in the hole, in the dirt. Gets away from Cantu. He's going to have to hurry. Is he in there? Yes, he is. The throw took Clements off the bag. So it goes a strikeout and a wild pitch. We'll see how they call it other than that, but I know that that will be a strikeout and a wild pitch. This ball just gets under Michael Cantu. Rolls away. Casey's doing the right thing on the inside, but the throw just high. Takes Casey's foot off the bag right there. So a leadoff base runner for Stanford here in the sixth. Brody will step in. Ball gets away. It's going to at least to at least 90 feet. And that's all as Texas defense has put a runner in scoring position. Quite frankly, ball hadn't been put in play yet. The man standing at second, nobody's out. The throw high to first by Michael Cantu. That'll be an error on Kyle Johnston right there with a wild throw to first. It is E1. So Edmund in scoring position. Foul back out of play. We were watching batting practice today. Quinn Brody was putting on a show. <laughs> he hit he hit it five or six balls way out of this ballpark. You were talking about somebody hitting that house across the street. He did. He actually did over the taco shack sign. That's a blast. Yeah, it is. Go move my truck. It's insured. <laughs> oh and one. to Brody chopped on the ground right side one to three to one on the put out but does the job it's a good quality at bat moves the runner up 90 feet into scoring position with one out Stanford trying to crawl back in this ball game there that time in the game Greg, and you know this as a pitcher when you need a strikeout. If you want to help yourself as a pitcher, 
you need a strikeout, and right now, that's what Kyle Johnston needs. Big strikeout. On the ground, and third, bobbled by Clements. He was having to hurry, can't come up with it. We'll see how they score it, but Stanford on the board, and it's a 4-2 ball game. He was going to have to hurry, Greg, to get it out. He was coming in on it. See, this ball takes the second hop, stays down. Stays down on Cody right there. Would have been a good play. He had to come up with the ball. And Skip Johnson's going to go out and talk to his sophomore right hander. This is more to settle him in because this that run, quite frankly, you can just put it on the Texas defense. They, they didn't do anything right in the inning at, to this point. It, strikeout wild pitch. The throw was a little bit offline. Then you have a throw to first that moves the runner up to second. Uh, you do have play a good defensive play with the ground ball to first. And then you have the miscue there. Yeah, I understand trying to keep a runner close when he's at first base, but you have a four to one lead. They're going to give an RBI single on the play right there. Then a Horner credited with the RBI. Kyle Johnston just too quick on the throw to first. Yeah. Mikey DeCroder will step in. Well, now you need a, a ground ball. Stanford with the second run. You said it, I mean, you don't want to get, you don't have to get four runs at once. You can peck your way back into it. And also they're getting Kyle Johnston's pitch count up. Now it's 73 pitches. I tell you what, the momentum of that fifth inning, Texas looked like they were ready to break this game open, the double play ball. And getting out of the frame and then out coming back and right back in the ball game are the Cardinal. Kroger one for two in this one. Single to center. And it's grounded to third. 75th pitch of the ball game coming for Kyle Johnston. Lays off the high hard one. That was Stanford's second hit with a runner on in this series. Now they're two for 23. That's how good Texas pitching's been. They've been very good with runners on base in these first two ball games. Didn't get the call right at the bottom of the zone. That's a good pitch. And it's three and one. Hard to lay off of that pitch, but the Croder did. Misses again downstairs, and all of a sudden the Cardinal have something working here in the sixth. Texas bullpen will start stirring now. And a four to one lead in control of this ball game, but a couple of bad throws, a misplayed pickoff attempt. You're an extra base hit away from having a tie game. Absolutely. Go ahead, run, actually. Strides to the plate right now, and Alex Dunlap. He's 0 for 2 as he steps in here. Longhorns a double play depth in the infield. Off at the end of that, going back is Baker, able to make the play. Just cued right off the end of the bat. That's a big out for Texas. That'll bring Johnny Loker to the plate. Loker 0 for 2 in this one as he strides to the plate. Two runs, three hits, two errors for Stanford. Four runs, five hits, two errors for Texas. These two teams always very good defensively, and defense has not been good in tonight's ballgame <laughs> so far. On plays that haven't been tough plays. 
Yeah, routine. Yeah. Hits the inside corner. The count evens on his 80th pitch of the ball game. I know you want to keep runners close at second base. But I think if I'm Joe Baker, I'm, I'm not going to be near the bag. Kyle Johnson has good enough velocity and keeps the ball away that the hole over there at second base is, is open. I'd worry about the hitter. Nice job by Cantu to smother it. Especially now with two outs and two strikes on the hitter. Yeah, I'm not worried about him stealing the bag now. Cantu does a nice job of smothering it, keeping it in front. Cantu a big man. Got to get down. Got to anticipate. Did a nice job right there. Crowd into it here. Understanding this is a big out. And the one two. Got him. Good breaking ball right there. You can see Cal Johnston fired up as he gets out of the inning. Whoa. We go to the bottom. 4 2 Texas. We go to the home half for the sixth, 4-2 Texas. Greg, one of the things that pitchers sometimes can get overly excited, and then there's sometimes when they try to they very subdued. Kyle Johnson was not subdued when he got that big out. He's been the top trying to hold that emotion in all night, but it was kind of a sloppy inning. I mean, you had the, the wild pitch, the runner on first with the throw, and then the wild throw over to first, and a run scored. Stanford could have got right back in that ball game, and Kyle Johnson got a big strikeout and showed the most emotion I've seen out of him since he's been here. Well, they're back in the ball game a little bit. They've cut the lead to a 4-2 ball game as we go to the home half of the sixth. Jake McKenzie, the sophomore from Dallas, will get his first plate appearance as he came, has come on into the ball game. Well, popped up in the infield. McKenzie's first appearance in the series. Edmund puts it away for the first out of the inning. Jake getting all tied up right there. Okay. Got to bring Casey Clemens to the plate. Casey has walked and scored and struck out in his two plate appearances. Family members there together. And he's all, I just saw him and Kissimmee with the Astros. He's all over the map. He's all over the map. I saw him playing in a golf tournament, I think, too, <laughs> a couple of days ago. Down at the Honda Pro-Am. Foul back to our left. Now, you didn't move much from that one, partner. You saw knew it, that. I you read it, it right bat. away. I saw it off the bat. Okay. I'll leave that one for Bob Cole. That was over there close to him. One and one to Clements. Weisenberg into the windup. Pull the string, had him out in front. These two clubs always have great pitching. We've seen that so far in this series. Really, we have six runs tonight, one total last night, but the four miscues, two by each team, have, have been a major part of the run production tonight. Well, yeah. The Texas took advantage of it. They had three runs in without a hit in the one inning, then scored their fourth run. Stanford took advantage of a couple of wild throws last inning, got their run. Well, that, it, it always tells you this. Six runs scored tonight and only two RBIs. <laughs> you know, so you know, when runs are scored, two RBI base hits, put it that way. Payoff pitch to Clements. We'll do it over again. He'll be followed by Brady Harlan, who's come into the game. So some changes in the Texas defense in the outfield from the way we started the ball game. Tyler ran that hit in a bunt attempt. You hope he's okay. That hand was shaking down there. They got the first base. Went out. 
to left field after that and then misplayed the ball and then after that inning he was taken out. I'm sure that hand was a little sore. And this is throwing hand too. Yes. Three two again. Fights it off. Keeps the at bat alive. If Weisenberg tries to challenge Cody in, I'm getting mixed up. Casey in right here. A couple of pitches way away. As Casey leaning out over the plate. Ninth pitch of the at bat coming. Stayed away. Good at bat. Ball four. Tyler Rand started the ball game. He's not into the game right now because he really <laughs> took a blow on that right wrist. Off of the finger right there. He, he's hurt. He knows he's hurting, and then you can see right here. It was starting to swell on him quickly. Good is shaking. That's some tenderness right there. On ice right now. Gets away. Throw to second is offline. Nice anticipation to get into scoring position by Casey Clements. That's good anticipation. You got to anticipate the ball getting away and don't hesitate. Does one you, you practice that the ball in the dirt recognize the ball in the dirt as soon as it hit the dirt. Casey was off. A good thing for Stanford that Nico Horner was where he was because the throw was way offline. Oh and one. To Harlan, who got his first career knock, his last time up. Out in front of an off speed. Fits and it's quickly 0 2. Eisenberg set. A lot of foul balls again tonight. There are. Guys are battling, especially with two strikes. Clements leads from second. Or let's chase some out of the zone. See if Weisenberg tries to. Go back out of the zone away right here. Floated over the middle. Pulled the string. Well, it looked like it could have been the change up. Not exactly where you want to throw it, but worked out for Mr. Weisenberg. Uh, he got that ball. It actually got away with it because of the change of speed. Right. But you don't want to keep the ball in that part of the play. <laughs> no. No, normally you're getting a new ball from the umpire when you throw changeups <laughs> over the middle of the plate. Did you wait, Greg? Did if you gave one up, you didn't give up that many. But if would you, oh yeah, I did. <laughs> did you want the ball from the umpire before the guy got to the plate, or I wanted it immediately. <laughs> give me a new one. <laughs> but then you had the umpires that wouldn't give it to you until the guy crossed home plate, and that made that made me mad. <laughs> So I didn't want to stand there and wait and watch Give him score. Give me another baseball, right? Yeah, I wanted that ball so I could get back behind the mound and collect myself. Gerwitz steps in. It ain't 0 for 3 as he steps in. But he's reached on an error and scored. He's actually reached twice on miscues by Stanford. And grounded to short. But he has scored a run. Longhorns would love to add that insurance run. 180 feet away out at second base. Couple of looks back. Way upstairs. 41 pitches. How about the length from the Stanford bullpen when they've come into the game they we they had a, a reliever last night throw 96 and let them go I mean it, it is a four game series 
And you can't just keep you can't let a guy go out there and throw 25 or 30 because he's done he's for done tomorrow. For the weekend, the so you might as well get what you can out of your reliever while he's in there. Two and two to Gerwitz. I'm sure even though you are a reliever in inner squad games, you've you've thrown 50 to 60 pitches. Not 96. Yeah, <laughs> not very often. Not at this point of the year. <laughs> right. The 2-2. Two -two. Did he go? Yes, he did. For the strikeout, the fifth. Actually, the sixth of the game. Texas baseball continues their series versus Pac-12 foe Stanford right here on LHN this weekend. Tomorrow afternoon, 3.30 Central. And then concludes with game four Sunday at 12.30. All games on Longhorn Network streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. You can look at the starting pitchers tomorrow for tomorrow's game. You know, these guys both were Saturday pitchers last week. It's like you talked about when we started the series last night. You were going to see some new guys on Thursday, but once you got to the weekend, it would be the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday guys. Keep them in that rotation. See a couple little crafty lefties going tomorrow. Both of them get victories in their first start, and both of them pitched well. Matt Whitaker will step in. Bottom third of the order due for Stanford. Like this, into the seventh. Our starting pitcher here, and his second start of the year, for Kyle Johnston. That pitch has been nice all all night. He's really done a nice job to glove side against the left handed bat. He's got, still got the good velocity going. It's been a, a good night for Kyle Johnston as far as commanding all of his pitches. He's had the curveball, he's had the slider, the changeup has worked, the fastball's been there. It's tough to command all four pitches on any given day, much less when you're out there. The second outing on of the, the year. mound, right? Yeah. Well, speed misses inside, and it's two and two. The lefty Travis Duke came in and got a big out last night. Sure did. Two runners on. Easy ground ball out in front of him. Got Whitaker to chase one upstairs. Eighth strikeout of the ball game, and that ties Kyle Johnson's career length and start. Six and a third. Now it'll be career. Every out he gets from this point forward will be a new career high. Decker steps in. Does a nice job right there. Decker, I'm sure, looking for that slider. He swung at it his first two at bats. Unable to hit it. Kyle throws a fastball right down the middle and he takes it. Decker's one of those guys tries to get into the box late, takes his time in between pitches. I guess I was always I was always in a hurry to hit. So I got in the box and I was ready to go. <laughs> No one pitch in there for a strike. There's a lot of times people talked about, oh, aren't you thinking what he's going to do? I said, if I think too long, I'm not going to hit anything. It's fastball slider curve change. Well, they say, think long, think, think wrong. wrong. Get it, see it, and hit it. The 0 2. Didn't get the call. Out at the top of the strike zone on his 90th pitch of the day. I would think his window is very short. At this moment, this is again almost in the same spot in the count evens. See Kyle step off the mound a few times tonight. Look up there to the right. He's got some little spot up there that gets his mind back on the zone. Just missed with that one, and the count goes full. Yeah, that was close. Just off the plate. 
You don't want to give up any free base runners. You got to go right after him right here. Especially at this point in the game. Tied him up inside. We'll do it again, 3-2. From 0 2 to 3 2. As a hitter, you think it's your advantage. You've seen a lot of pitches. See what happens here. Inside corner, strike three call. Ninth strikeout of the ball game. Ninth for Kyle Johnston. The late call right here by David Wiley. Ball in the inner half. See, Michael Cantu does a good job of catching that ball. Sticks it with that glove. Called strike three. Look at there. Lining them up. He's counting them. Make sure you got them right. Jack Klein will step in. He's grounded to third and walked. His two plate appearances. Longest outing of the year. I need a Longhorn starter to this point. In game five. Of the season. And that's been the pitch of the night for me. That's been his best pitch of the night. He's, I mean, it's tough to pick the pitch, but yeah, I mean, they aren't there like a little, little slider, sharper breaker than the, than the curveball. He's been able to command it, control it, and throw it off the plate when he needs to as well. He's just had these Stanford hitters guessing all night. Trying to finish it with three consecutive strikeouts. Can he do it right here with a one two count. Longhorn fans trying to cheer him on. Here it is the one two delivery. Left that one upstairs. Klein did a nice job fighting that one off. Didn't think we would see the hundred pitch mark. We might not. <laughs> got, got one got more one to go. One more pitch to do it in. I mean, you, you can guess anything right here for Kyle Johnston. Busty man right here. If it that works, now you can go back away. Still at 91 miles an hour. Looks okay. strong. Now let's see. He goes right back to that bread and butter. Go back to that slider away. The 100, 100th pitch of the night. Fought the curveball up. That was 83. Huh? Looks like Kyle's able. I mean, one, once you get a feel for it, some pitchers can just just a little tilt of the wrist one way, or a little it? more. You can have put a little more break on it, yeah. or a little tighter spin. 68 for strikes. That's a good percentage. More than two thirds of his pitches tonight. Strikes. Misses upstairs. And the count goes full. I think now over the 100 pitch mark. If he does, if Jack Klein does get on base, could be the end of the night for Kyle Johnson. We'd like to see him end it right here. One hopper on the ground by Boswell in the left. I would think that's going to be a base hit. The fourth of the ball game for Stanford. And that might be it for the sophomore right-hander. Ball's hit crisply to his right. Tried to backhand did Boswell. I think they would call that a base hit. Yeah, they got by him pretty quick. He just took two steps. He didn't leave Kyle in. It's a base hit. Fourth of the ball game. It's back up the middle. Baker has it. Flips to Boswell, and that ends the frame. Through seven, Texas leads 4-2. 4-2 Texas lead back in the third after a walk, and then Tyler Rand hit in the hand. He has since left the ball game after that. Put runners at first and second. Zane Gerwitz. Put the butt down. The throw gets away. And right here, boy, this is a big play in the ballgame. Gets by Horner. 
Texas gets on the board, moves the runners up to second and third. Boswell does a nice job hitting it to the right side, moves it over for the second run of the inning. But then after that, back to back, the wild pitch actually scores the third run. And then Texas goes back to back to back with base hits to put four on the board. They have not scored any other frame, Greg, in this series. Losing last night in 12, one nothing, except that third inning where they got to put a four spot on the board. Yeah, Texas had been shut out for 14 straight innings until that third inning. So it was a huge inning. A little help from Stanford, but also taking advantage and also getting base hits. Crooked numbers are always good. Boswell one for three. He's driven in a run. Be the two, three, and four spots due for Texas here in a 4 2 ball game in the seventh. Weisenberg out. The bullpen's done an outstanding job for the Stanford Cardinal in this series. Last night was just brilliant. Weisenberg's been good again tonight. The 2 0 chopped on the ground. Right side. Easy play for the first out. Going back and look at the game summary, Kyle Johnston is the story of the game, in, in my opinion, just because of the fact that, that he's gone out given some great league, over 100 pitches in the ballgame. Well, yeah, you were looking for that out of a Texas starter. First time through, Texas starters, five innings was the most. Kyle Johnston with a career high, seven innings. An outstanding job for Texas tonight. You see the four runs there in the third inning. The summary of this series, though, if you look back for Stanford, listen to these numbers, Greg. 11 innings out of the bullpen so far in this series. 11 innings pitch, four hits, no runs, no earned runs. They've walked five and struck out 16. <laughs> That's <laughs> dominant work. Great numbers. Good strikeout numbers. The, the zero runs. I mean, that's amazing. Ball hit crispy the ball. Second hit of the night for Joe Baker. Last night, Baker swung the bat well, didn't get a whole lot to show for it. Tonight, he's two for three. Short, quick, compact swing right there on top of it, down and through. So that brings Barrera to the plate. Barrera with the base hit. One for two in this one. He's hitting all five Longhorn games this season. Ten total hits now in the ball game. Six for Texas, four for Stanford. Weisenberg's 50th pitch of the game. Baker is a threat to go. He's already stole third in this ball game. That their big right hander set. Tried to let the shaft out right there. I think he was envisioning it. <laughs> Got by him. <laughs> we get an extra long driver right there and launch that one. Ferreira has really done a nice job. Seven of his last ten plate appearances. He's three singles. Three base on balls and was a hit batter, so it's been very efficient as of late at the plate. On base percentage has been good. I 
think Barrera got fooled by Baker at first base. I think the movement from Baker made a fake to go to second. And I think that stunned Barrera that time. Yeah, immediately, this little trash look down to first base like, I never had that. Don't do that, that to vision. me. <laughs> I was trying to hit the baseball. I, I, I could run anywhere. It wouldn't bother me. Goes outside the zone for the first time in a while. He really hasn't expanded the strike zone very often. Sixth strikeout by Weisenberg. Breaking ball out of the zone. Tres still thinking about that one he took <laughs> right down the middle. That brings Michael Cantu to the plate. Michael one for three in the ball game. It's grounded to the mound, hit into a 4-6-3 double play. Singled. If you're going to go, this first pitch is a good pitch to run on if you're Baker. See what happens here. I've been keeping an eye on it. There, you there go. he goes. Pretty sure you're going to get a breaking ball to a big right-handed hitter. Good time to go. Second of the night. Texas efficient so far this season in the stolen base department. That's the fourth tonight. And they've only been thrown out once all season long. Was he going his last time on base when it was the pass ball of the catcher's blow? He was. He got credited with a stolen base in that Three one. for Joe. He's got three. You're exactly right. You're in scoring position now. now. You can get that good secondary lead. He's going. Got to be 100%, and he is. That's not a smart play. With two outs, like you said, you have to be 100%. You get thrown out right there with two outs. You're already in scoring position at second base. Throw was just up. You got to be a thousand percent. And he is in there. And then Joe Baker having a little bit of a discussion there as he's getting up. He was, Mikey the Kroger was trying to push him off a little bit. Fourth of the night. <laughs> a little grin over there. They're still jawing at each other. Skip talking to John Bible down there. Skip saw what happened. But John Bible right on top of it. He's not going to let anything happen. Guys are going to compete. See if Cantu can get a ribby right here. The big right hander winds and fires. Catches the outside corner. This bullpen has been brilliant. If I'm a hitter right here, I'm thinking two spinners. I'm not looking for a heater. You only got one. You only needed one. Seventh strikeout for Weisenberg, and he pitches out of the jam in the seventh. Kyle Johnston, the starting pitcher for Texas tonight, had it all working. Had the fastball, had the breaking ball, had the changeup. All of his pitches, pitches were in command tonight. The tempo, the rhythm, everything was there. And showing lots of emotion as he comes off the mound. Numbers are good. Seven innings, a career high. Career high, nine strikeouts. Longest outing of his career, longest outing for a Texas starting pitcher this year. And the new pitcher coming in out of the bullpen for Texas is Bo Ridgeway. He is the true freshman right-hander from the Woodlands. Comes on here in a save situation. Obviously, probably you will see Sugar in the 
in the ninth. He was available. I asked that from Skip Johnson before the game, and he said he would probably use him for an inning. So if Ridgeway can get it to the ninth, he will get credited with a hole, but that's his job right here to get three outs. And he'll be facing two, three, and four spots in the order for Stanford. Quinn Brody will lead it off. One for three in this one. He singled and scored the only run of the ball game. That's still a two-run game. Absolutely. I think you take a strike here. Texas. See what Brody does. Texas bullpen needs to come in here and pitch like he pitched well last night. Shut down the Stanford team the last two innings. The 2 1. Catches the quarter and the count evens. Two runs, four hits, two mistakes for Stanford. Four runs, six hits, two mistakes for Texas. Those mistakes have been an integral part of the ballgame. Popped up. Coming in is McKenzie. Able to make the first out of the end. That's always a big out for a young guy coming in with a two-run lead in the eighth. Yeah, especially after falling behind. Fell behind 2-0, made two good pitches, and made a third one right there to get the out. It's a big out. Nico Horner will step in. Horner, a single. One for three in this one. Couple of ribbies tonight. We haven't seen a lot of Ridgeway. Greg, one of the things that you talked about, a quick arm. I think he's got a quick arm and an unusual arm slot. <laughs> a quick, quick three-quarter arm slot. That's how he gets such good sink on it. See that ball going down in the zone. We're falling behind 3-0. Four pitch walk. Tying run. Strides to the plate. Mikey DeCroder has got power too. DeCroger. One for three in this one. Actually, one for two. He's walked, singled. He has already homered this season. You got your lefty Duke ready in the bullpen. With the righty Dunlap on deck. Hit pretty well in the gap. Can't get to it. This is going to get all the way to the wall. Cut off by McKenzie. Really nice job by McKenzie. The relay to the plate. The call is safe. Tim Henderson coming down the line from first base to make the call. And it's a three, four to three ball game. Got to tell you, Greg, nobody made a call on the play. We were waiting right there. Tim Henderson was a little late getting down the line to the plate as David Wiley was going to third. Watch the end of this play, folks. And McKenzie does a great job of cutting this ball off before it gets to the wall. A strong throw to Brett Boswell. You see the play here just up a little bit, but there's... Tim Henderson just now getting into the, the screen, makes the late call. Looks like his hand does get on the plate. But we have a one-run game. Well, right there, you can see he's in safely, and I was waiting, but there was nobody there to make the call. And then finally, you see Tim Henderson coming into the picture late, giving the safe sign. And we got a one-run ball game. Tying run, out at second base. Dunlap. Steps in. You know, that's that's one of those things in early in the season in a four-man rotation umpires. Umpires, it's early in their season, too, as well. It's, that very easily could have 
had a play at the plate with nobody there to make the nobody call. Nobody there. The 0 1. Outside. And it was a pretty close play. It was very close. The ball was, the throw was a little high to Michael Cantu, causing the runner, Nico Horner, to have to slide around the tag. Good hitter's pitch coming here to Dunlap. Greg, I go back to the 6-4-3 double play that ended that real chance for Texas in the fifth. And since then, Stanford has had all the momentum in the game. Yes, they have. It's up to the Texas bullpen right here to stop that momentum. Breaking ball misses outside. A good hitter's pitch coming here on 3-1. So Travis Duke, the lefty, and Chase Sugar, the righty. So Sugar put his hat up over his head saying he's ready. Travis Duke has been throwing, so he's ready. Roker is the right-hander waiting on deck. If, he, if Sugar's ready, I wouldn't be surprised to see him come in on a 3-1 count. Skip still talking to everyone out on the mound. Chase had to get ready in a hurry down there. Stanford one for five tonight with runners in scoring position. They were 0 for 10 last night. So one for 15 in the series. And they're up one game to none in this four game set. Conversation over. Do you give in right here, Greg? And throw a fastball? It has to be a quality fastball. I mean, I'd, throw, I'd keep it away from Alex Dunlap. He does have some pop. Went off speed and hitting. Go ahead run reaches first base on the hit batter. Right handed hitting Johnny Loker will come to the plate. We're going to have a pitching change. Skip Johnson's second visit to the mound. This inning started with a one out walk. We come back. We will give you the new right hander for Texas. Chase Sugar into the game. True freshman from Bridge City, the 5'10", 180-pounder. He has done a nice job of coming in and closing out ball games. He obviously leads the team in appearances. He was available. Skip Johnson told me before the game, he says, I'd like to use him for one inning, but he's going to be coming on here trying to get a four-out save. Yeah, he needs to come on right here. Actually, a five-out save. There's only one gone in the frame. Right now, you want to just come in and throw strikes. The run, Nico Horner got on base by walk, scored on the double by DeKruger, and a hit by pitch. The two base runners this inning have been of the free variety. Chase Sugar coming in, fastball, slider, live fastball, touch 94, 95 miles an hour. See how he does going back to back days here. Duke Kenamon will be the pinch hitter. As they will lift Loker for the pinch hitter. Loker was 0 for 3 in the ball game. So Mark Marquis goes to his bench. Both teams. Adjusting, trying to make their moves. You come in here with a, a pinch hitter. You know he's going to be aggressive. He's got the tying running out there at second base. You make a quality first pitch. Get you a ground ball. Get out of this inning just by throwing one pitch, taking advantage of an aggressive pinch hitter. Also a pinch runner. Alec Wilson will pinch run at first base for Dunlap. Wills spinning everywhere. Tying run at second. Go ahead, run at first. One gone in the inning. Top of the eighth. The pinch hitter comes to the plate. 
Hittleman will step in. A true freshman from Peachtree City, Georgia. Longhorns looking for a double play ball. Outfield straight away and fairly deep. One for 15. Or the Stanford Cardinal with runners in scoring position in this series. Good breaking ball in there for a strike. That one has some good slower breaking ball from Chase. Quick step to me. Threw the Frisbee in there. Four for 12 this season are pinch hitters for Stanford. 0 for 1 tonight. And they're going to make him come back to home plate. David Wiley's going to make Hinneman come back to home plate. Said he did not move to get out of the way. Most of the time when he turned to the inside, you don't hit, get that call. But he, he didn't feel like that he tried to avoid getting hit. Did he turn to it? Looked to me, he turned away. And normally, if you kind of lean out over the plate a little bit, but Hinneman just kind of turns his shoulder in, maybe saying he didn't give an effort to get out of the way. It's going to be no back in old play. Right. Count's going to be even at one and one. Break for Texas. Did he go? Yes, he did. And it's one and two to the Stanford pinch hitter. I'm going to throw that knee buckler right now. Yeah. Started out right behind his hip. That front hip. Then sweep away. Looks like Chase wants, wants the heater. Chopped on the ground. Going to be tough to turn two. Only place to go for Boswell's to first. Everybody moves up 90 feet. Tying run 90 feet away. Go ahead, run 180 feet away. Winokur will be the hitter. Matt Winokur. 0 for 3 in this one as he comes to the plate. With the movement on Chase's fastball. They're going to walk him. Like the matchup against Decker, who is the DH. Mark Marcus looking around the bench right now. Does he have a left-hander he can go in? Yeah. Do you know he would like to get have a favorable matchup with a left-handed hitter? So far, I don't see anyone with a bat. And now we'll see someone step out there into the on-deck circle. So like number 15, Austin Barr. The free pass and the intentional walk loads the bases. It, it's going to be Austin Barr, as you mentioned. Barr, first baseman, catcher by trade, is a senior from the state of Washington. We have not seen him in this series. He's from Camus, Washington. Ooh, for four on the season. So Barr will be the pinch hitter. Bases full. Here in the eighth and a 4-3 ball game.
stressful pitches right here. Need the tenth since coming into the ball game. Gets the call. That's a dynamite pitch. Knee high away at 93. If you stay right there, ain't nobody gonna do nothing with it. Not much you can do with that pitch. The concentration of a closer. Barr steps back in. Hit on the ground to third. This could do it. Throw across the diamond in time. Texas gets out of the eighth. Only given up one, maintains the lead. Welcome. New catcher into the ball game is Bryce Carter as he comes on after the pinch hitter. Alex Wilson, who pinch ran for Alex Dumrap, will stay in his spot in the order, in the fifth spot of the order. He remains in the game in right field. As Texas would love to get some insurance here in the home half of the eighth in a 4-3 ball game. Weisenberg has done an outstanding job. 57 pitches, Greg, coming out of the bullpen, and he has slammed the door shut. Well, nothing new for this Stanford bullpen. We saw it last night with Hawk and Vile. Tonight. Exactly. Look at the four innings, seven strikeouts. Texas had him on the ropes there in the fifth inning. Couple hit batters and then hit into a double play. Kind of shifted the momentum in this game. He stayed in there and done a really good job. Really impressed so far with the arms I've seen out of the Stanford bullpen. Well, the extra base hit, the first for Stanford in the top of the frame. He's made it a 4-3 ball game. Texas would love to answer here. Get some insurance. Clements will lead it off. Count evens at one and one. It'll be Clements, McKenzie, and Casey Clements here. This is downstairs. Lead off base runner right here. You'd love to get that bunning game involved. We have a couple of shots adding. <laughs> Chopped on the ground. Three unassisted. That's where the eight starts for Texas. The ball up in the zone and Casey tried to go up and get it. Just rolls it over to first. Look at these Stanford bullpen numbers. 23 in the third innings. Nine hits. One run. 31 strikeouts. Well, this series, 12 innings, no runs. Five walks, 12 strikeouts. How about the strikeout? Four to one strikeout to walk ratio, and they've allowed one earned run this season. <laughs> The sophomore from Dallas steps back in, came into the game. 0 for 1 in this one. Has good speed. Find a way to get on. Bunched in the outfield are the Cardinal. A little bit different alignment for McKenzie. They start bunching the gaps. Not quite as much as UNLV did last week. But in this ballpark, you try to take away the gaps in left and right center. Well, UNLV was almost playing side by side out there. They was covering the gaps. The 3-1. Right down Broadway. We'll do it again. 3 2. Oh, 
Going to be a tough play. Base hit. It's one of those. McKenzie with good speed hits the high chopper and beats it out. Second hit of the year for McKenzie. Now do you hit and run early in this? I think you do early right here. Try to put some pressure on the Stanford defense. Move him around and see right here. You're the Kroger right there. Might be better off letting that one go, seeing if it goes foul. You recognize the speed. You can see that Jake McKenzie was up the line pretty good already. Tried to play, and Jake's speed beat it out. Hey, you mean you've had plenty of stolen base. You got a new catcher in the game, in Carter. Casey, 0 for 1 in this one. He's walked and scored, walked twice and scored. Pops his ball up. Will it stay in the field to play? Yes, it does. Nice play by the Crowder. Nice to find that wall. He found it early. Made a difficult play easy right there. Well done. And we're going right into the dugout suite right there. That ball stayed up there a while and came back into play. I thought it was going to be out of play. Brady Harlan will step in. Got his first career knock, came into the game. Second night in the row. One for two as he steps in here. Lines it to left for a base hit. Got a high fastball. Stayed aggressive. Second hit of the inning. Just a nice, easy swing. Seen Brady get a little aggressive and try to go after the high pitches. Did a good job on that one. That was a pretty, pretty swing and just a nice base hit to left field. Carter will go out, and make sure that he's on the same page with Weisenberg. First time he's had a guy in scoring position at second base. Hey, first what time. We, what are yeah. we using? First time Carter's. Yeah, what, what, what are we using play? with a man on second? Is it first sign, second sign, first after two? Did you have any sequence that you really like to use? I went first. First sign. The catcher would ask them, what if they foul it off? First sign. <laughs> Gerwitz one for seven this season with runners in scoring position. Opportunity right here for the junior from San Antonio. Texas has been really good on the base pass tonight. We're going to have a visit right here. A lot of pitches. I believe we might see a new pitcher right here. He was walking towards the gate, but now he's getting back up on the mound. He wasn't sure if he was into the game or not. Tyler Thorne down there in the Stanford bullpen. Doesn't seem like Rusty Filbert's in a hurry to take his pitcher out. Waiting for David Wiley to get out there, give his pitcher down there a few more. Now he's going to go to the bullpen. Well, good job by. Just an outstanding job. Keith Weisenberg coming in this game, striking guys out. And again, the Stanford bullpen keeping Texas at bay. Texas had four runs when he came in the game, and they still have four runs. They've been able to claw back, had the go ahead run at second base last inning, not able to get him in. Good job by the Stanford bullpen. Now second we'll night in a row, really, too. And you look at last night, what they did last night. Weisenberg has come on. You can see the numbers right there. He is responsible for both runners on the base pass at this point. But four and two thirds innings of work, 69 pitches out of the bullpen, struck out seven, and allowed just those four hits and four and two thirds. That's a great job of keeping your team in the game. Greg, when you know that the game was very almost got away from Stanford in that four run third inning. Well, it could have very easy, and that's the. What a long man does right there. You you're, you're behind by you know three four sometimes even more runs. Your job is to come in the game shut the opposing team down. Give your team a chance to fight back 
and maybe win the game and he did the exact thing. Keith Weisenberg tonight and the bullpen did last night. Tyler Thorne comes into the game the 6'4 210 pound junior. He is a Texan from Lubbock Texas. Mark Marquis told us that we would probably see him at some point. He is competed in the 2007 Little League World Series as a member of the Lubbock Western Little League. Thorne had two home runs in Williamsport and helped his team to a third place finish Ooh. as they won the consolation game versus the Caribbean. Another one. Pitching here, but showing pretty good power right there. Right there. And those two swings. Center right, good pop there in Williamsport. So they're the runner up. It's a four pitch pitcher coming out of the bullpen. Fastball. Slider change up and a curveball. Likes to use that fastball. You have a good good live fastball. See no problem with that. Right now. As like the rest of the Stanford bullpen, runners on base. His job is to get out of this inning, get get one out here in the eighth and give his team a chance to maybe possibly tie it or take the lead in the ninth. Well, he's going to be one of those guys as the season goes on. He could close games for them. So he is an eight, ninth inning guy. That's exactly what he's asked to do here as he'll face Zane Gerwitz, who's 0 for 3 as he steps in. And you get him in here, keep his pitch count down, he'll still be available the next two days. Breaking ball. He went around for strike one. Tight breaking ball. That was one that looked like Colton Hawks last night. He happened to work that regional in 2007 for Lubbock. I'm getting old. He was a 12 year old. <laughs> now he's pitching in a collegiate game. Breaking ball misses down and away. He did dominate up in Waco in the Southwest Regional 2007. We'll take a look at his face. Hadn't changed much. A little bit older, but it looks like that 12 year old that was hitting homers. One and one to Gerwitz. Breaking ball almost gets away from Carter right there. Gerwitz comes up empty. That is a tight, hard breaking ball right there. Good stop. By Carter back there. Got to anticipate yeah. every time you put down that breaking ball sign with that kind of breaking ball that it's going to be in the dirt. Especially, yeah, when they've thrown them 80 miles an hour. It's hard to catch standing up. A good one. Strike three, and the threat is over for Texas. Texas needs three out to tie this series. On a cool night, as it's down to 55 degrees on the big board here at UFCU Dish Falk Field, three outs away are the Texas Longhorns from tying up this series at one game apiece against the Stanford Cardinal. It'll be the nine, one, and two spots due. What does this do to the young freshman when he comes out here knowing he needs three outs? Is it, this is a real, his first real test <laughs> of a save. Yeah, it is. I, I, I don't think much bothers him. He's, he's got the mentality of a closer. The concentration has got the stuff too. But it all starts right here with this first hitter. Breaking ball misses downstairs to Jack Klein. He'll be the leadoff hitter, and he'll be followed by Tommy Edmund and Quinn Brody. 9 1 2 due for Stanford. Who have climbed back in this get ball game, trailing 4 0 after the four run third by Texas. Down just one here. Klein will be taking this 2-0 pitch right here. I'm sure he will. Chase Sugar needs to get this fastball over the plate. You do not want to give up a walk. Force Jack Klein to swing the bat, earn his way on. The 2 1. 
Fouled away. Nice job of coming back. Even the count. I keep attacking right here. It's the the curveball is good, but you do not. You go to 3 2. Now the hitter would be expecting that fastball. Give him the fastball right here and get it. Get your out. The 2 2. Breaking ball. Didn't get the call. Must have went around the plate. And the count is full. But that was a good pitch. Really good pitch. Close to the zone. It's the one that the umpire, though, can see on that inside. If it does come around, you can see that one. Payoff. Chopped on the ground. One gone in the ninth. Strikeouts are good, but you could have saved yourself a 3 2 pitch right there. Going with that 2 2 heater. Can't fault the effort, though. That was a good pitch by Chase Sugar. On 2 2. Came back with the fastball and got the all important leadoff hitter there in the ninth inning. Tommy Edmund has scored in this ballgame, but has not had a base hit. Leadoff. Hitters in the leadoff spot in the order for opponents against Texas now 0 for 19 on the season. This the fifth ball game of the year. Good one. Dynamite break of ball. Quickly it's 0-2. to overthrow that one a little bit. You can, you can always tell I me mean, try to overthrow it. Try to force it in there. Your front shoulder flies your arm drags and it's 99 percent of the time up in the zone. The one two. Fouled away. Good job right there just battling 94 mile hour heater low and away. But the junior shortstop from San Diego. Around the plate there, and it's two and two. Same way again, would you go to the fastball here? I go, yeah, I mean, he has good control of, of the curveball, but I like the fastball. Breaking ball hit pretty well out to left. McKenzie there for the second out of the inning. Longhorns one out away from nodding up this series at a game apiece. And for one, you take a chance right there. I don't think he, he could catch up with that fastball, but that breaking ball was over the plate and struck pretty good to left field. Quinn Brody steps in, fouls his ball down the left field line. It's going to find foul territory. That was trouble for right when it left the bat you knew it was I don't know how he hit it that direction that was a good fastball not foul by much you see about a foot You're on the left field line look at Michael on the ground <laughs> he was going to make sure he knew whether it was fair or foul intensity <laughs> Stanford one for nine on the night with two outs in the ball game one for 12 in last night's game. The 0-1. Hit crispy on the ground. This should do it. Baker up with it to Clements. Texas wins it. Four to three. Greg, are your thoughts on what you saw tonight offensively now for Texas? Well, we know the pitching's been good. Yeah, Texas took advantage. I mean, they, they got the runners on there in the third inning. And then made the bunt and, and took advantage of, of errors uh, by Stanford. And they were able to put up four. Got hits after that, Keith. But they were able to sustain the rally, almost bat around there in the third inning and put up a crooked number in the fourth. And eventually that's all they needed was four tonight. And now for our most dependable player of the game, powered by Chevy Silverado, Kyle Johnston. Career highs. Innings pitch, career highs and strikeouts. Comes away with his first victory of the year he did a really nice job tonight yeah he did he came out and you could see it from the first inning on the concentration was there 
he, his emotions were there, but he kept them in check. We saw him on the bench really collect himself. If he made a bad pitch or fell behind, he would collect himself on the mound. A very good job by Kyle Johnson. Texas needed him to go deep in this ball game, and he did that going seven innings tonight. He gave you that link, and let's go down to the eyes of Texas.